in the past, would you be someone who would describe themselves as having some of these, what we would call extreme left uh, ideas? Were you someone who uh, espoused these uh, closer to the, the hard left or socialist left and then and sort of moved to the center? Or how, and how did that evolution kind of go? I think it was a little bit of both. I mean, I have shifted on some things for sure. So the, the one thing that I've shifted on absolutely that if you find, if you listen to videos from me five years ago to now, I've absolutely shifted on economics. I mean, I would say economically, I'm as libertarian as it gets. I want low taxes for everybody. You know what to do with your money better than I know what to do with it for you. And I want everybody to pay as little into the government as possible. Let's get the government instead of being this giant bloated monstrosity to be a slim trim operation. And we, we know, by the way, I live in California, you're in Florida. Well, in California, we pay 13% uh, state income tax and we have massive budgets, uh, massive budget deficits. You in California, you have zero income tax and right. your, your budget is balanced. Right. So it's right. never about the amount of money that they're taking in, it's about the amount of money that they're spending. So th th this is an important piece. So I would say absolutely I've shifted on economics to the right, let's say. Okay. But I would say everything else for me, I was never a full on, although I, I, I called myself a progressive and I worked at a progressive YouTube network and all that. I was never sort of one of the really crazed intersectional far lefties, but I did fall trap to, I saw all these people screaming all the time. They were angry all the time. Everyone they disagreed with was a racist and a bigot and a homophobe and a fat. And there was a certain allure to that. There's a certain sexiness to that because it feels like, what it felt like to me uh, I say this in the book, it felt like sort of liberalism on steroids. They were so good and everyone else was so evil and liberals are generally nice and open-minded and they'll chat with you, but these guys had moral indignation and fire in their belly. And I think I did fall a little bit prey to that, but I never really bought into the whole idea of intersectionality and collectivism in, in the way that most of them have. Well, I've I've seen some of your some of your views, even even socially, and and I would describe them as what what today we would call more central views. They're they're not they're, like you said they're not like radically to one way. And the more I talk to people, no, no matter what political party they identify with, it seems that the average American kind of falls somewhere in the middle with all of these issues. It's that there's there's very few, and unfortunately they get the most attention sometimes, but. It, it, there's very few that fall on either side of the extremes, and everyone else is kind of like we can we can discuss this. This is something that we can we can talk about. I know that's one of the things that uh, in, uh, that you mentioned in your book, and I know that's one of the things that sort of uh, brought you uh, ha has has moved you more to the center over time. Is that that if you don't agree with me, shut your mouth, and I don't I want to shut down your speech. I don't want you to have the ability to say what you want to say. It's my it, the uh, whatever I think is the right way, and shut your mouth if you disagree with me. I, I wonder, were there moments in your life? Was it sort of a gradual evolution? in your worldview or was or were there was like an epiphany moment where there are certain incidents that that made you say hey wait a second i gotta kind of rethink this thing yeah well first off I, I agree with your general premise there that most people you know you don't have to pick 10 of 10 things to say you're a republican or you're a conservative you don't have to pick 10 of 10 things to say you're a lefty or you're a democrat that most of us have some of these these views that can be mixed and again, I mean, this is exactly what I say in the book. I think classical liberalism is the best lens to actually pick some things from both sides. Um, there, there are three moments in the book that I go through that really were my wake up moments. Um, the most famous one is, you may remember this from about five years ago, uh, Ben Affleck was on Real Time with Bill Maher and Sam Harris was on as well. And everyone knows who Ben Affleck is, of course. Sam Harris is a, is a neuroscientist. He's a mindful meditation guy. I didn't even know who he was at the time, but I was watching this live on, uh, on HBO. And they were talking about the difference between ideas and people, that we have to be able to criticize ideas, but you don't want to be bigoted towards people. And this is a very simple concept that everyone should understand, meaning if you criticize the set of ideas that make up the Democratic Party platform or the Republican Party platform, that doesn't mean you hate everyone who says they're a Democrat or a Republican. If you criticize the ideas in the Old Testament, which by the way, rabbis have been doing for millennia, 
that doesn't mean you're an anti-Semite. If you criticize the ideas of the New Testament, that doesn't mean you hate all Christians. Now, what they were talking about were the ideas of the Quran and, and Muslims. And it's a very obvious idea. Again, I mean, just think about it on its head. You should be able to criticize any set of ideas, but you wouldn't want to be bigoted towards all the people who may or may not subscribe to all of those ideas. You would want to treat everyone individually. Well, that's what they were talking about. And, and Affleck, turned to Sam Harris and Bill Maher, and he was red in the face, and he was overly emotional and pounding on the table, and he called them gross and racist. And that moment for me clicked what I had been thinking. I had had about a year before where I was thinking something is not right here. When you want to talk about the treatment of women and homosexuals and free thinkers and, and public intellectuals in the Muslim world, uh, I would argue that li liberals have failed us. And uh, the crucial point of confusion, uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thank God you're here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the crucial point of confusion is that, that we have been sold this meme of Islamophobia, where every criticism of the doctrine of Islam gets conflated with bigotry toward Muslims as people. Right. And that is uh, it's, it's intellectually ridiculous. So, even it gets so hold on, are racism. you the person who understands the officially codified doctrine of Islam? You're the interpreter uh, well, of that, well, so you well, can say, well, I, this I'm, is, I'm, I think any... I'm actually well-educated on this topic. I'm, I'm asking you, so I mean, you're you, saying, if I criticize the... You're saying that Islamophobia is not a real thing. That if you're critical of something... It, well, it's not a real thing when we do it. Right. <laughs> well, well, no, it no, really no, isn't. I, I'm not denying not, that, that certain people are bigoted against Muslims as people. That's, right. And that's a that's problem. big of you. But the... But why we are you have, so hostile to, about this it's, it's, yeah. it's gross. It's racist. It's, it's not. Hostile. It's but it's so nuts. It's so. It's like saying it's those so not your shifty Jew. You're not listening Absolutely to not. what well, we are saying. You guys are saying but, if you want to be liberals, believe in liberal principles right. like freedom of speech, like right. um, you know we are endowed by our uh, forefathers with an inalienable right. All men are created no. equal. No, Ben, we have to be able to criticize bad ideas. It can't be that everyone on my side is so morally right, and everyone on the other side is such an awful person and bigoted and racist and homophobic and racist. And somehow seeing this overly emotional A-list actor red in the face, screaming and emoting and the rest of it, it became very obvious that that really was in many ways the root of all the problems that we have right now. We can't separate ideas from people. And if we can't do that, then you can't discuss ideas. And if you can't discuss ideas, well, you've got a formula for a really sick society. So I lay out two other moments. That, that was the first one. There were two okay. others that I have in the book. But that... But that was the one that, for me, I think because it was this A-list movie star. Oh, and the fact that it was Bill Maher who was suddenly being called a racist. Bill Maher, who has stood up for every lefty principle for the last 30 years. The idea that the left was suddenly calling him a racist. And, it, and it's kind of funny because now, if you flash forward five years, the right basically likes Bill Maher. They agree with, they disagree with him on policy, but the right usually says, ah, oh, Bill Maher, he gets it on free speech, you know. So he basically is okay. And it's the left that hates Bill Maher. So really we've seen just a complete flip of, of meanings of things that we had just you know, four or five years ago. So uh, I, I, like, I like that a lot. And it, it, it does in a lot of ways seem that, first of all, politics obviously makes strange bedfellows and that sometimes one party will even eat its own if you don't subscribe to all the ideological principles that are laid out in that party's platform. I, I wonder, Part of, part of the evolution of a person and part of the shifting of worldview of a person, because it's not, worldview doesn't exist in a vacuum. When, when, you, when you were perhaps more uh, towards, let's say, the left, you had a friends group uh, that you associated with, you had companies that you worked with. That, that itself, it's, it's not just, oh, I, 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 I changed my mind now and that there's no outside repercussions. I imagine you may have lost friends and, uh, and, and, and work. So how did, how did you deal with that angle of uh, not just shifting your worldview and, and sort of being honest enough with yourself to say, hey, uh, maybe I need to reconsider some of the things that I've held true for this many years, but how did you deal with sort of the repercussions of losing friends and associates and uh, all that comes with it? Well, in many ways, that was really what drove me to write the book, because you will lose friends when you come out of the political closet, as I talk about it in the book, when you just say, hey, I don't think exactly what you think I might think, or I don't believe in these 10 things that I'm supposed to believe as a lefty or whatever it is, right. you are going to be assaulted. You are going to have friends turn on you. You might have family members turn on you. You will have you know, the Twitter mob and the online keyboard warriors turn on you and the rest of it. And it's not easy. 
and it really can can leave you questioning everything about yourself. People will say terrible things about you and call you racist and bigot and all these things. Even if you've said nothing racist nor bigoted, they'll, they will come at you with these crazy over the top phrases. And what I was trying to do with this book was give people a little bit of a roadmap to escaping this kind of lunacy. And, and what I, the, so the reason I tell my story is that I want people to know that, yes, you're gonna go through some really rough stuff, shocking stuff, I mean, really shocking stuff, but when you get out on the other side, and you will get out, I have yet to see it destroy a human being. When you get out on the other side, you will be better for it because you will be standing for what you believe in, you will be expressing what you believe in, and guess what? You will find new friends, you will find new allies, you will find richer relationships on the other side because Right now, if you have a whole bunch of relationships that only hang on by the thread that you don't speak what you think, in many ways, those are not real friendships. If you go through the transition to be able to say, well, this is what I think, this is why I think it, now I'm over here, and these people have to let you go, well, you can't, you can't beg. You can be as open as possible, but you can't beg to, for them to come with you. But I sense what you will find is if your transition is from left to right, you will find a very rich place on the right with conservatives, with religious people and secular people, with libertarians and, and whatever it might be, you will find a rich place of people to agree to disagree. I find that to be a really interesting spot right now. No, that's, that's beautiful. And, and, I, and I, think, I think that is one area that holds a lot of people back from actually making changes in their in their life it is it's easy to change a worldview but the repercussions of that are sometimes very difficult very challenging